we're hearing tons of credit for Brad Stevens about the the plays that he's drawing up and Terry Rozier playing and Tatum playing to these to this level that we've seen in the playoffs. How much credit do you think he deserves for this? No, oh, a ton of credit. I I just think that you know every team that has success, they have good players. So let's let's start at the top with my good buddy Danny Age. He went out and Danny Danny loves getting long athletes. Danny loves getting scrappy guys with high basketball IQ. He gets a lot of guys that play the way he did. And, um, you know, he's got a lot of basketball players there. But the thing that, that Brad does is he's able to put people in positions to succeed. And he really, he lets his basketball players play basketball. But you look at a guy like a, a Shemi Ojale, okay? He played a lot against Milwaukee. Shemi Ojale is the second-round pick from SMU. But you one thing that you never saw Shemi Ojale do, throw the ball to the other team. You never see Aaron Baines fire the ball to the other team. Those guys, he has his role players doing what they do. He lets his basketball players, look, if you're a basketball player, you're going to be driving to the hole. You're going to have some turnovers. You're going to have some, you're going to have some issues because that's just, that's the nature of the game. No one plays a perfect game. Look at Brad, what he does with all of his role players, how he puts them in positions. They, they shoot the open shot. They don't turn the ball over. They don't make mistakes. He doesn't put them in positions to say, okay, you know, Aaron Baines, I want you to do a dribble handoff and attack the basket. And if they come, throw it to the – well, you know, Aaron Baines would make turnovers <laughs> – excuse me, left and right. Uh, he puts those positions – so what he does is two things that is amazing. That His out-of-bounds stuff is really great. But he does two things. He allows his role players to do exactly what they do well. They always help the team. They never hurt the team. He, and then he allows his basketball players to go out and make basketball plays. Puts them in position – to make basketball plays. Like I said, it, it, it's simple. Tatum's on the right wing, wants to shoot a three. They close out hard. He drives. He comes there, draws two players, throws it out to the left wing. The left wing guy, they rotate up to you know Jalen Brown. He throws it down to Rozier in the corner, and Rozier gets a wide open left corner three, all because of Tatum's ability to drive the ball, drop people in there. He puts those basketball players in draw and kick positions all the time. It's a great job. Al Horford's got a really, really high basketball like you, along with Tatum, along with Brown, along with Rozier, along with Smart, along with Marcus Morris. He has a lot of high IQ players, but he puts them in positions to succeed. And some of those out of bounds players that uh, out of bounds plays, excuse me, the last game were genius. The throw, the throw in from Tatum to Brown on the left side of the court was an amazing um, uh, drawn up play. Then all of a sudden. He has to call a timeout on the right side late in the game where El Horford got that layup. He's pinched down there. They took a timeout. The ball's in the free throw line. There's not a lot of room. He draws up a winner just over the top to El Horford. And so you got to give Brad Stevens a ton of credit. But he puts guys in positions to succeed. And, and that, that's what you're trying to do as, as a coach. Just you know, make your, make your players better by allowing them to do what they do well. Kevin McHale, a couple more minutes with him here uh, as he calls in from Philadelphia prior to game four between the Celtics and the Sixers on TNT tonight right here on the Rich Eisen Show. Your best guess, Kevin, what a conversation between Brad Stevens and Red Auerbach would sound like. Oh, you know, Red is such a good guy. Red, Red, Red's a basketball junkie. That's the thing. Red, Red liked playing gin and he liked basketball. Those are <laughs> the only two things Red liked to do. And... Um, Red was just such a, a basketball junkie. He would love Brad Stevens. I mean, he would sit there and talk ball with him. You know, Brad, when you ask Brad, why did you do this? He actually gives you, an, you know, I, I talk basketball with Brad, you know, quite a bit whenever I get a chance to, and Danny's there. And, you know, Brad will say, well, I was thinking this, I was thinking that, and that's what Red loves. Red loves thinking man's basketball. Like, you know, you just didn't do this out of happenstance. You did this because um, – you know, I saw them fronting. I saw them switching. So I, I made this adjustment. And so Red would love that because Red loved uh, thinking man's basketball. And, you know, Red did very much like Danny did. He got a bunch of players that high at and had high basketball IQ. And so that's what Red liked. That's what Danny likes, too. Red and Brad would, would have a great relationship because – yeah, Red, Red loves to talk basketball. He was just a fun guy. He used to go in his office all the time and just sit in a chair and talk ball with Red. But when he started, what he did, what, you know, and it was just it was, it was fascinating to me. Just a very interesting guy, and uh, um, I think he and Brad would get along wonderfully. And, you know, and, and Red, Red loved guys that, that that could see the game and think the game, and 
you know, play the game the way they're playing it. The Rich Eisen Show, weekdays at noon Eastern on Audience.